Hey, it's Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography with Peter Reed Miller. I'm here today with my longtime friend Richard Maxson, co-worker, compatriot, uh, sometimes uh, competitor, all of those things. Richard and I go back to the 70s. We started out shooting for Sports Illustrated together. Uh, Richard's career diverted. He's much more technical. He is running, was running a color lab and then moved on to work at Kodak when Kodak was Kodak. And now he's come back out here. He's doing some technology work. He's doing some uh, photo liaison work. But uh, we just want to talk a little bit about the days when we did work together at Sports Illustrated. So Richard, what do you? Well, oh, Peter, first of all, thanks for having me. Hey, thank this you is, for this coming is down. Really, yeah, this is really great. You know, get to reminisce about things that happened and <laughs> maybe things that we're going to uh, embellish a little bit. <laughs> ah, but no, uh, it was true. Yeah, it was all true. Everything was true. Um, Oh, what I got is one of the things I'm going to say before we get started is this guy is the consummate pro. Uh, great respect for him. Our, our, as he said, our paths diverged. He went into the artistic side more, always with the hard sports with it. I did the hard sports and went on the technology side. I cannot do what this man does with Nor the can camera. I do what he does with with, with a, a computer. With with camera and lighting and uh, just a fantastic uh, fantastic shooter. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And as you said, we go back a long way. Uh, it's well over 40 years. Yes. Yeah, I know you're cringing. Sure. I am too. I knew this guy when he had really bushy hair. Yeah. And he knew me when I had hair. Yeah. So that's the, way, uh, that's the way we can put in that kind of perspective. So uh, uh, many years ago, uh, we were shooting the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach. Richard and I, and it was uh, Tom Watson and Jack Nicholas were right neck and neck for the lead. And we hit 17, and I had been doing Watson, but I guess for some reason I, I thought Nicholas was going to win. So I headed down the 18th fairway following Nicholas. Richard stayed with Tom Watson, yep. and uh, on that little 17th hole that's out by the ocean, uh, well, tell us what happened, Richard. Well, Peter goes walking by and he goes, hey, I'm gonna go follow, I'm gonna go follow Jack. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, thanks, great. <laughs> okay, fine, you. And there was an air of competition oh, throughout oh, a, oh, a long period of our yeah, careers. Yeah, we were competitors. There's absolutely no question about that. But out of the competition became a great friendship. Yes, yes, yes. And, and respect for each other. Because at one point we were sitting there going, we're not the enemy, it's the bosses in the office that are the yeah. enemy, so. So, so I'm walking down the 18th. And Nicholas uh, Watson shanks it into the rough. I mean, the rough. And I the mean, it's rough up in Pebble Beach. It's is rough. like rough. I have a 400 millimeter f3.5 on a Nikon body, some, you know, ectochrome film. I line it up, and what happens? He hits the ball, chips it in. And then goes crazy. And then goes absolutely stark raving nuts. To this day, that picture is the most valuable one economically from a, a dollar perspective I've ever shot. Wow. It's, it is sold everywhere. In fact, his foundation came to me and wanted to buy it outright. And when I gave him the price, he didn't do it. Meanwhile, I'm walking down the 18th and I hear that roar. And I know that, that, you know, that it's over. I know it's over, I'm with the wrong guy, that was the picture, and, you know, that was that. It was and, a, it's a long, I drove up there, it was a long drive home. And there was, there's another backstory to it, and I'm not even sure you know this. So I go around the, uh, I come up the uh, 18th fairway, and he's standing about 20 feet away from me. So I made a bunch of headshots of him, that's what became the cover. Mm -hmm. And then when he sunk the putt at 18, he went, you know, crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty content knowing I had some really good pictures. So went back down to Santa Monica the next day, about 11 o'clock in the morning, the phone rings, and it's Eileen Miller, the, I remember Eileen. She who was, was a, the golf editor. She was a golf photo editor at Sports Illustrated. The, the, just a little aside, Sports Illustrated uh, worked a week that was uh, Thursday through Monday. And Monday the magazine was closed, and so that's, that meant that everything was determined, and, and on Monday you would find out what you had in the magazine or what you didn't have in the magazine. So you always waited for a call or in later years an email uh, as to how things came out. So Yeah, so 
Eileen called and asked me if I had a certain picture. And I go, no. And she goes, okay, well, we've got a problem. Okay. I said, fine, Eileen, I don't have the picture. A couple of minutes later, the assistant director of photography calls. Was that Don? No, it was uh, Terry. Terry. Oh, yeah, Terry. Yes. Gil is absolutely going crazy. Gil Rogan was at the time the managing editor of Sports Illustrated. A very uh, talented, brilliant, eclectic sort of guy. A very eclectic kind of guy. A little strange, but that's beside the point. Um, but good guy, good guy. And I said, why? Well, neither you or Peter have the picture. And I go, wait a minute. I've got him chipping out of 18, or chipping out of 17. We've got him finishing off on 18. We've got the portrait. We've got all of that. What more do you want? Well, Gil wants to know why you don't have a picture of the ball bouncing off the rock <laughs> that Nicholas hit onto the Watson, beach. Watson. Oh. No. Oh. No, oh because Nicholas's tee shot yeah. on 18 went and uh, bounced off the rock. Yeah. yeah. I took the phone and I'm going, uh, goodbye. <sighs> yeah, really. Crazy. 30 seconds later, the director of photography calls, Barbara chewing me out mostly for hanging up on terry yeah. and i said barbara i'm sorry i don't have the picture blah 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 and she is just digging into me gill wants this gill wants that i we he doesn't understand and all of that i said okay sorry goodbye a <sighs> couple of minutes later gill calls and i said look it before we get into, and I knew Gil pretty well, I said, before we get into the conversation, are you guys on drugs or something back there? <laughs> How the hell would we possibly have that picture? And, and Gil starts yelling at me, and then he starts laughing. I go, I go, what's so funny? He goes, well, I just wanted to see if those guys would actually take what I said and bug you about it. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so glad I didn't have to go through that. Yeah, and I, I don't think we ever had the conversation about this, but the God is honest truth, that happened, and yeah, it was yeah. one really strange morning. But I was happy I got the magazine. Yeah, yeah, you got, you got a lot of space in that magazine. Yes. But one of the things that always happened after a game that Peter and I did is we'd call each other on Monday morning to see how we were doing mm -hmm. and who got what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was just the right thing to do. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, trying to think of another memorable. I, I I can think of one that was not relations between us were not great at this point. Uh, it was at the Dodgers. It was back in the say Garvey years. Yeah, yeah. And they there was a feud going on. And at this point, we had clubhouse access. And yep. so, you know, either when when we would shoot a Dodger game, one of us would be on first, one of us would be on third, and we would each put a remote on the other position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and this was, we were actually, they let us in the clubhouse. And there yep. we were, the two of us, standing around this clubhouse full of baseball players. The tension was palpable. You could cut it with a knife. Well, and, that's when Garvey and Sutton got into a fist fight the day before. Yeah, and, and that's, it was Sutton or Garvey had a black eye, and that's yeah. what we were uncovering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, God knows why they let us into that clubhouse that day. But it was just, it was just like, one of us would have been fine, but neither one of us was going to be was going to let the other one be that one. So yeah. both both were there. And, you know. Every once in a while, things got set up that were kind of weird. Well, it's like that NBA final when we said, you know, we got is the rule that we can have four heads or four packs. Yeah, in, in an explanation, uh, most of the of the time until recently, when Sports Illustrated shot NBA games, we used uh, big strobes, 2,400 watt second strobes, up in the catwalks. We shot initially with Hasselblads because they had a higher sink speed. Then we got to shoot with the sink speed went up on the 35 millimeter bodies. But so this lighting became uh, sort of if you had the lights, you were fine. If you didn't have the lights, you were not fine at all because the, you didn't have your pushing film all this and that. And as the NBA went along, they started to exert more and more control. Yeah. In the early days of Sports Illustrated, we did whatever we wanted. That's true. We did whatever, we, and we did a lot. But as things went by, the, the pendulum started to swing, and the NBA is starting, and, and we would do, each person would have a four light setup at a game. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we were cut down. One night we showed up, and, and one of the people from the NBA said, well, you only got one setup. Yeah. Yeah, and we're like going, uh, how's this going to work? 
and it was it was tough because both of us wanted to be on the lights and yeah. we had to figure out a way to do it. Yeah, there's really no way to shoot not on the lights at that point because you were at like ISO 3200 with yeah. color film yeah, with yeah. color it looked like slide crap. film it looked like with crap. slide film compared to the stuff on the lights that you're shooting at F8 at ISO 200 or something yeah. like that. Big advantage with depth of field also. Yes, especially yes. with the Hasselblad. Yeah. So I'm sitting there with a the lighting technician. I go, have you got, how many packs have you got? He goes, well, I've got eight of them. I said, well, these heads had four tubes in them. So I said, what would happen if we fed two of the tubes with one pack and two of the tubes with the other pack? And he goes, we can try it. So we split the heads. We split the heads. So we each had a full, we had a full set of half of, a, half of each head. Yeah. I think that worked like one night. Oh, until we got blown in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, it was like, oh, yeah. well. I thought the rule was number of <laughs> yes. number of heads. Yeah. It says you can have four heads. Well, we have four heads. We just it was just about control, though. That's but that was control. also that was the the final. I believe was the final with uh, Chicago. That could have been. I, I think that was the that. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could have been. That's why the following year I didn't get assigned to the finals. I got assigned to the locker room for the finals. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh. which was which was okay. Yeah, yeah. So got the Jordan picture of him crying with the trophy. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. So, he did good there. He yeah. Did good there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I was also thinking about that that <laughs> that weekend, Washington, Chicago. Oh yeah, we did. Uh, Richard and I, and I believe we believe it was Walter Yost, uh, shot a game up in Seattle, Washington, UW, on a Saturday. Uh, nice Saturday. Nice. Nice, bright, sunny, sunny day. Sunny day. And we had to be in Chicago the next day for a Bears. I'm not sure if it was a playoff game. or it was, but a, playoff. It was a, it was a playoff game. Yeah, Walter wasn't with us in Washington. He met yeah. us in Chicago. Okay. But it was, so we're shooting the game, and the game was going along. Yeah. And we had like a 5 o'clock or there 6 There was one flight that we one could, flight. one flight that was going to get us there in time for the game. So, yeah, yes. So, so I think you. I left the game early. Yep. And, and I got us back in the day when security was a far different thing. I got us both checked in. Yep. And uh, Richard, uh, Richard, you made it. You. I made it with no time to yeah, spare. Yeah. Got onto the plane. Just an absolute, you know, yeah. mess. We flew to Chicago. So now we're. It's a nice, beautiful afternoon in Washington. I mean, with shirt sleeves, it was great. We got to Chicago and it was it's minus freezing, twenty. Freezing. Yeah. And we went out to the game and we just froze. Yeah, we did. And not, I think it was not. Chicago, San Francisco. Might have been. It yeah. Might have been. Yeah, because I think. Yeah, because I think Michael was at that game. Yeah. In any case, we were definitely not prepared, which is a lesson we both learned uh, about cold weather shooting. And yeah. I, I think we can both handle it pretty well now. Well, it's like uh, neither Peter or I did the Lake Placid Olympics because John Dominus didn't think that West Coast California photographers guys. could handle. Yeah. The yep. weather, so John was, being a Californian himself, originally from yes, California. Yes, originally from Trade Tech High School. Uh, Hamilton, actually. Really? He, yeah, he was. Uh, oh, no, Manual Arts. Manual. Arts. That he, was the class with Dominus Zimmerman, it, it, it was, Mark Kaufman, and Mark Kaufman, and, and Art and Bob Flora. Yeah, and then who was the guy? Who, Art Rogers. Art Rogers. No, well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. 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 I think it a lot was. Of great photographers. I think it. I actually, I think it was Hamilton with Louis. Uh, the the uh, instructor was Lois Vinets. Okay. And right. mainly, I know that because Don Loritzen, my good friend, was one of right. their. Right. Was after them, but yeah. Lois Vinets was the, uh, the thing. They. It was an amazing group of photographers that came out of there to, yeah. at roughly the same time. Yeah. Well, what's uh. Let's think of one more good uh, Sports Illustrated story. Oh. Your memory's probably better than mine, Richard. <laughs> all right, all right. And this was a story we told about about Tony Tomsick. It's the night before the Super Bowl at the Rose Bowl. This was uh, which Super Bowl at the Rose Bowl? Is this uh, the second one? Uh, the Redskins, Dolphins. I think so. Or the Redskins. Or Minnesota. Oh, no, what, no, Minnesota was, I was still with the paper. That was the first Rose Bowl Super Bowl was Minnesota against the Raiders. Right, it wasn't that one, I think it was the next one. Okay, the I Redskins beat somebody. Yeah, what, whatever. One. So, Sports Illustrated was absolutely crazed about lighting tests. Oh, and God. so, our, our photographer, the editor, Laurel Frankel, 
arranged for us to have the lights turned on and she got two high school teams to come down there and this go out get go in the Rose Bowl the night before for the, the Super Bowl. Game. Yeah. Go out there and we would go out and shoot these guys running plays because they wanted to and, and, and by the way the efficiency of doing this is ridiculous because you really didn't need to do it. But it was the kind of thing Sports Illustrated did. That's what again, we did. Again, you're going back to film that has, especially when you're running it at a high ISO, very little latitude. Yeah. Like maybe half a stop. Yeah, and, and my lab was processing it, so I needed to make sure everything was right. So we go out there and we do all of this and we shoot the stuff and... At the end, the two teams leave, and Tony Tomsic, who... Photographer from Cleveland, great. You started with the plane dealer, shot for the NFL. Yep. Great guy. Great, and great just guy. great guy. Goes out on the field and starts running, running uh, plays, imitation plays. And we're all just all cracking up. So some guy from the league comes down and starts screaming because... Oh. Somebody didn't tell somebody some reason, you were allowed to do it. I wasn't it. there that night. I don't think you were. Um, and then George Toma, the guy, the guy in charge of the grass, yeah. comes down and he's fine with everything. And this guy starts ripping into Tony. And we're all sitting there going, "Oh shit, what's this about?" And so he goes, "What the? Do you think you were doing out on the field?" He goes, "Oh, an '89." <laughs> an yeah, 89 yeah, right, yeah. right reverse yeah. and the guy just didn't know what to do and Laurel, and Laurel just kind of gets us and we just kind of leave but that that was a Tony Tony thing but uh, you know other stories with us like the morning of the NBA finals in Portland I guess it was in Portland yeah, I think it was in Portland Seattle it was Seattle yeah. I go to the airport and they grounded all the DC 10s yep so, I was already up there. I we had Bob Hagdom as a lighting tech, so Bob and I shot the game, and that actually started, ended up being my first Sports Illustrated co cover. Yeah, yeah, and Gus, I'm Gus Williams, who had almost taken my girlfriend away at, at USC. Oh, oh, I didn't, yeah, oh, I didn't yeah, know that part. Oh, I didn't know that part. Very, very convoluted relationship between me and the NBA, but uh, but yeah, so that was one of those things, one of those things that happens. Yeah, but, so. Uh, so I guess I had a cover before you. I think I had a yeah, cover did. before you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. okay. But, but he's had a hell of a lot more than I have now. That's well, for sure. I kept at it. But, yeah. But, uh, you know, on the reverse side, I got a call on the Monday morning of the Final Four in Albuquerque, and I wasn't covering it, and they got a call. Said, Manny Milan's hurt his back, and you get to Albuquerque. And I, like, rolled in there about 3 o'clock and yeah. went right to the stadium and poof, shot the game. So, Back in the day when you could do that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. Things have changed a lot. Things have changed a lot. But you know what? The uh, I still enjoy it. You yeah, still enjoy it. I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy it when the, the game, st from, the, from the game starting to the game ending, whatever game it is, I love it. Uh, it's the greatest thing you could do, the best job ever. Getting in, getting out, traveling, all that stuff has become increasingly <laughs> wearisome over the years. Okay, so I don't remember where this was. It might have been New England. Somebody was blowing somebody out, and with about 10 minutes to go, we decided to leave. We're on the radio, and all of a sudden, the other team scores two touchdowns. Well, I, I know that happened to me in Kansas City one time, but I think that was with Dave Clutho, not yeah, with you. But yeah. but yeah, there was always the kind of, okay, at Sports Illustrated, if you had the story, you had the story. And usually, if it was a day game later in the year, whatever you got when the light was good was what would gonna run also we had to make the flight to get yeah, the film shipped. yeah 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 film shipping was a whole big deal back then yeah I remember driving out of the stadium and it came down to a field goal that, that could yeah and you and I were like oh, oh yeah. shit. I mean how do you explain that yeah but yeah. you know a lot of people have have asked me what made Sports Illustrated so great well there were the photographers, no question. I mean, yeah. we had a talent. Yeah, we had a talent pool. Those who came before us, you know, blazed Zimmer, a hell Zimmerman, of a trail. Walter, Neil, Neil. Yeah. Uh, Mark Kaufman, even High Peskin. Yep. You know, uh, those guys. I saw High Peskin shot the other day in a book. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were doing stuff, you know, that was amazing for the time. We also had the best equipment. 
Yes. That everything that we ever needed, we got first. Yeah. But one of the things that people don't recognize because it was also so far in the background, they were expert at logistics, moving that film around. Yeah, yeah. And they, we would have at any time multiple Lear jets from, flying from time to time, time yeah. to time, flying from here to here to get the film in. Film had to get to New York by Monday morning. And yep. It was in process. The lab was in the building. And if you got it there Monday morning, and we had a guy, uh, Bob Ryan, who picked it up at the airport, he got it in the building. The lab was in the Time Life building. It was processed. It was on the light tables. It was laid out usually by noon. Yeah, and for us it was pretty good because by the time we woke up, they were done. Yeah, yeah. Generally, and yeah. We, we'd get feedback, good or bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Steve's famous line, how do you think you did yesterday? This is Steve Fine, who's uh, appeared in some of these videos. How do you think you did yesterday? Never knew how to answer that one, but no, no. It was a great time. It was, it was amazing. And I think the, the other thing is the staff of editors, by and large, were good. Were really good. A lot of ideas, a lot of good editing, all that. So all yeah. in all, it made it made it a great magazine. It, yeah. was, it was a great magazine. Yeah, no, it, no was, it was it uh, was a unique place to be. We were there the golden years. Yes, yes, we were. No question. And also, uh, I was remarking this to Peter earlier. We uh, we were the uh, Showtime photographers. Yeah, although I shot Magic Johnson from the, I have a picture of him uh, in a cape pulling a rabbit out of a hat that was done his rookie season, and I had the cover of his first retirement. I, and I had the privilege and honor of the day he signed. I was with Jack McCallum. Wow. We had lunch with him. Oh, wow. And then I'm sitting there shooting him in the Forum Club having, having lunch. lunch. Yeah. And so we both grew up with but he was a great guy. I was and I was at the press conference yeah. when he retired. Yeah. And I was actually shot the game when he returned. I got the cover of that when when he, he returned the back. first time. Wow. As I said, there's still some competition here, but <laughs> Yeah, where was I? Yeah, where was I? Why wasn't All I there? Right. I well, should have been there. Richard, again, thank you for coming. I think we've got some, you know, there's always more stories, but uh we'll we'll cut it for now. Okay. But, that's fine. But uh thanks for coming hey. and Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe and good shooting. Thanks a lot. I want to thank my friends at GF Crew for making this video possible. If you want to make money shooting action sports, check out GF Crew. Go to gfcrew.com to join. It's free. They have a whole process and an app set up to help you make money shooting sports. Check it out. Get started today.